Hello and welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. In this episode, I will be talking to Zach White, a career coach known for changing the game in engineering career coaching. He'll be talking about the importance of work-life balance and provide some great tips to manage burnout and fear, especially during these uncertain times. Now I'm your host, Jeff Perry. I'm the founder of More Than Engineering and I'm a leadership and career coach for engineers. And this is the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. This is the first podcast dedicated to helping engineers and technical professionals with both their personal and professional development. Now let's go ahead and jump right in. Now it's time to jump right into the main segment of our episode. Today I'm talking with Zach White. Zach, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. Jeff, it's awesome to be with you and your listeners, and thanks so much for the invitation, man. Absolutely. So, Zach, as we just get started here, tell us who you are. What do you do? What does a day-to-day look like for for Zach White? Wow, it feels like that moment in the movie uh, Office Space. Like, what exactly do you do around here? (laughs) No, man, thanks for asking. So, you know, I'm an engineering career coach myself. I I help engineering leaders at all levels to reach that next level in their career and in their life. And we'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that. And Jeff, I do it through content, coaching, and community, you know, creating, uh, whether it's our custom exclusive programs for engineering, if it's content on social media or, you know, speaking engagements, et cetera, just being out there and sharing you know, the good words, so to speak, around building our engineering careers and the challenges that we face in getting that done. And then the direct coaching that I do you know, with our clients one-on-one and in groups, and then community building, really creating spaces and, and places for engineers to get together, learn from each other and, and build careers together, which is such a powerful thing for, for momentum. So that's, that's the, the kind of the big picture. And like any entrepreneur, I wear a lot of hats, you know, there's the coaching hat, helping engineers day by day, dealing with those challenges, but also the CEO hat here at Oweco, my company, Oasis of Courage, supporting my team, casting the vision for where we're going and scaling the impact of the company. And you might argue too, there's the CEO of my life role, the same thing that we're talking about with all of our clients and with the, the engineer listening right now, you know, what am I doing to build my own lifestyle and practice what I preach in a way of lifestyle engineering. So every day is an adventure, Jeff, like all of us, there's, there's never one answer to what am I going to do around here? But the common theme is I want to be a part of helping the amazing men and women engineers out there who are facing real challenges every day in how to break through to the next level. And they're frustrated. They're stuck. They don't know what to do or they're not supported by the organization or you name it. And, and I'm absolutely honored and privileged to be working in this space alongside people like yourself and so many others. Yeah, I think you captured it well. It really is an honor and a privilege to be a part of that journey for other people. Um, it, you know, that's certainly been my experience. I'm curious, Zach, like, what's your own story in getting into doing this work and doing this coaching, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I started in engineering. Went to Purdue, mechanical engineer, boiler up 2008, <laughs> and started into my engineering career, just like you know most of the people listening to this. And, and honestly, Jeff, I, I loved it. I worked at Whirlpool Corporation. I joined a, a rotational leadership development program there. They gave me incredible opportunities and found early success in engineering, had a good balance of the, the technical skill set and the, the people side of life, the soft skills really was able to to do a lot of things at a young age in my career. Uh, Went on to get my master's in mechanical engineering at the University of Michigan, go blue. Uh, You know, don't ask me, I'm a big 10 guy. I like all big 10 schools, but (laughs) the, you know, the career just continued to grow. But Jeff, what happened for me is I became one dimensional. I really got hooked on the idea of career success. And I wanted all of the things that come with that, the recognition, the promotions, the big paycheck, the, the high visibility projects, you know, leveling up my skills, constantly seeking more and more and more in my career. And what happened was waking up one morning, driving to a divorce attorney's office 
sitting down at a table across from this attorney wondering, how did my life end up here? Mm. This is the last place I ever thought I would be. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. And none of that career success mattered at all in that moment. And, you know, that was a really dark time of life for me as an adult. And honestly, you know, through the healing journey of recovering from divorce and depression and the things that came as a result of that, that time, I discovered that there is, in fact, another way to build a career and a life. Hmm. And, and in fact, after that is when I had my biggest results in my career. Yeah. I was working less. I was getting more outcomes that mattered to me in the office. And I was happier than I had ever been outside the office. And you know, now I'm happily remarried and, and life is a whole at a whole new level. And in that process, I realized how important accountability and coaching and support was going to be for me. And I yeah. hired my first coach. And yeah. this, this was years and years ago while I was still in, in engineering management. I hired my first coach. And honestly, Jeff, I never looked back. I've had a coach always, ever since. And I fell in love with coaching as a way to amplify the things we just talked about and keep me on track with the lifestyle that I wanted to create both at work and at home. And so I started practicing coaching and doing training in coaching as a vehicle to help my leadership at work. I mm -hmm. wanted to be able to coach my team. I wanted to be able to, you know, the engineers that were working for me, under me in the organization, uh, to be able to coach my, my peers and understand those relationships. And it led to a lot of people wanting time from me for coaching. And okay. I ran out of time. You know, you, you can only have so many mentees and people that you're coaching when you also have a full-time job and you want to balance yes. your own life outside of work. And I had this entrepreneurial itch. I always have. And, you know, I remember very vividly, Jeff, the moment where, you know, the stars kind of all aligned and I just saw this vision and this picture for my life to say, I love engineering. I love coaching. I love entrepreneurship. Oasis of Courage was born. You know, it's like, I, I want to combine these things. So I, I quit my very successful engineering career uh, and, and jo jumped in full time to coaching because I really felt called in my own purpose mm -hmm. to help others not face what I faced in their life, in the process and journey of building their career. And in my perspective, Jeff, I believe a lot of, you know, career building and, and support for that is broken inside the organization. And so I wanted to bring a new perspective and change the game around that. And, and honestly, so happy to have been doing it. And it, it was the best decision I've ever made. Yeah, love it that you haven't worked back or looked back. So, Zach, we've talked a little bit about this, about thinking about the whole life rather than just the career in terms of growth and development and leveling up and things like this. So talk to me about what your thoughts are about really taking that big picture approach, the whole life balance in, in what you do, whole life coaching. Why is that so important for engineers who are listening here, especially when maybe their first goal, the first thing that they're thinking about is trying to accelerate and build their engineering career. Absolutely. And, and first thing I'll say, Jeff, is I love it. If the engineer listening wants to be crazy successful at work, I think that's yeah. awesome. And, and I, that's why you're here. That's why you're listening. But, but please hear me when I say this. If you're an engineer you know, listening right now, no amount of success at work will make up for failure at home. Yes. It won't. All right. There's no paycheck big enough to make up for that moment when your kids don't want to be with you or are asking where you are or wonder, do you love me? There's no amount of recognition that makes that moment across from the divorce attorney for me the right decision. Yeah. It just won't happen. And so for me, it begins with that recognition that I am a whole person and 
career success is only one dimension and domain of what makes up happiness and fulfillment and satisfaction in my whole life. It can be a really big piece. And let's face it, it is. We spend a huge amount of time and energy at work, and it's really fulfilling. It can be, at least, if you're doing it in the right way and you're in a place that you're passionate about. But the bottom line is you are a whole person. We want to balance the whole picture and coach the whole person. And the reason, too, for why coaching this way, how you do anything in life is how you do everything in life. And engineers, especially male and females, not a gender thing. Engineers love to compartmentalize in their conscious mind. But you have to remember that 95% or more of the processing power of your brain is subconscious. And yeah. the subconscious does not delineate between your work life and your personal life, right? It's, it's the same across everything. And those patterns and habits that are blocking you or creating problems outside of work are almost every time manifesting in some way inside of work, but it's wearing a different mask or it's, it looks different and you don't see the connection because it's subconscious. It's happening in a you know, self-sabotaging automatic way. And I've seen it time and time again with my engineering clients, whether they're you know, new out of school or they're at the director level at a Fortune 100 organization and they've been doing this a long time. When they release the brakes, and correct and get back on track with areas of resistance and, and honestly areas of failure outside the office and they get those things on track, it creates an upward spiral into the workplace every single time. And suddenly a blind spot gets revealed where, oh my goodness, I can't believe I was acting this way, thinking that way, you know, these automatic things. So when we look at the whole person, it's not just about incremental gains in each individual area. Right. It's this compounding effect that when all of your life is working, you get energy and enthusiasm and this upward spiral that helps everything to work. And you know, there's countless examples we could dig into, but that at the core, Jeff, is why. Yeah, I love that uh, visual you talked about releasing the brakes. So finally we can go. I find that sometimes we are trying to make changes we're trying to make improvements. We're trying to level up. We're trying to make whatever improvement that or reach any goal that we have. And we've got one foot on the gas and another foot on the brake. Um, but we're not even aware of what is pushing on that brake. And that's what you're talking about. Those blind spots is those things that we need to zoom out, look at the whole picture, uncover. Then we can get that foot off the brake and then we can finally move. Um, and until we do that, yes, we're, we're not making any progress. We're just wasting gas. <laughs> Uh, or electricity, yeah, if you've got an electric 100%. car. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, totally. So, Zach, I want to get to another topic here. And, and that's some of the, we talk about this sometimes in, in burnout. And, and maybe with mm. the pandemic and everything that's happened the last year and a half or two years, like maybe that's created a new level of burnout or a new version of it, which um, has made it really hard for the work life and the home life and everything else. Um, kind of all coming together for better or worse. Um, and so how do you feel like engineers can gain more awareness of this um, and manage this burnout better and, and really try and stay productive in these various areas? What are your thoughts on that? Jeff, I think burnout is the unspoken pandemic. And, and I want to say too, while it may be true that COVID-19 and everything related to the global pandemic we have been facing the last 18 months has indexed some of that burnout up. I don't believe that COVID created burnout. Okay. I believe the pandemic revealed an issue that already existed in unbelievable numbers around the world in the engineering profession. Because I started OECO before the pandemic because I saw this problem. And my clients before COVID manifested with the same burnout issues as clients have during COVID. Mm -hmm. So don't confuse burnout as a COVID problem. Yeah. Burnout is an engineering and industry-wide organizational problem. 
and it needs to be talked about and addressed. So the first thing, if you're listening, you're like, okay, burnout. Some people immediately say, that's me. I am burned out. I'm exhausted. You know, I'm, I'm demotivated. I'm disengaged. And, and they're, they're in that camp. And there's a lot of you listening who aren't really sure where you're at on that spectrum or if this is even you. Maybe you don't feel it at all. But the first thing I want to encourage everyone to do is take burnout seriously because the consequences of not addressing it in your life end up permanent. And what I mean by that is in your health, you know, suddenly you have diabetes or you have some other major health issue that you're dealing with. And suddenly that's the most important thing. Or in relationships, like my story that you just heard, you know, relationships ending in divorce or you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend that's going great. And then that person's gone from your life. What happened? Yeah. So take it seriously. The thing about burnout, if there's one important shift to make, you know, we could talk about this all day, Jeff, but right. one shift, I want to encourage people. You know, what's the first thing to do? We need to change the mindset around burnout from focusing on the things that you are doing that might be causing burnout Mm -hmm. and focus instead on what it is that you are not doing because that's where the real cause of burnout lies. Okay. Most people want to say I'm burned out because I'm working so many hours. I'm under so much stress. I have this horrible boss. I'm in this toxic culture, this ridiculous project. Um, I don't like what I do anymore. You know, I need a new company or a new role. And, and we look at all of what is happening right now, and we blame those things for our burnout. And it tends to be a victim mentality of these external things or situations that I'm in that I can't change. That's what I hear so often. Like, that's the cause of my burnout. I want to challenge you to look at it from the opposite perspective. The cause of your burnout is not what you are doing. The cause of burnout in your life is what you're not doing. You're not prioritizing sleep. You're not prioritizing your health. You're not staying connected to your passions, your relationships, the people you love. You're not giving yourself self-care and priority week by week. You're not taking time for recreation, you know, recreating yourself. That's what recreation is, this process of renewal and rejuvenation. You're not making the decisions that a courageous lifestyle engineer would make to avoid burnout in the first place. And so we're blaming all these other things when in reality, it's your own choices that are slowly creeping you towards a potentially permanent damaging situation from burnout. Now, I don't mean to disregard real challenges that can be put onto your life from a tough you know, assignment at work or a bad boss or you know, a toxic culture. Those things are real. And it, you know, that's why coaching programs like what we do at Oiko can be really important is how do I get out of those situations or strategize what to do? But the point is, everybody's focused there, Jeff. And so if there's one thing for a listener to take action on and do, it's look at what you're not doing and make some decisions to prioritize those things. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people work long hours and don't burn out because they are investing into those key other areas. So that's you know just one of many things we could talk about around this topic, but take it seriously and get intentional to look at your life. You know What's missing? What's missing in self-care? What's missing in relationships? What's missing in giving time and energy to your passions and, and reconnect to those things first, all right? Then we can talk about how do I navigate all of these external causes that we mentioned. Yeah, I, I love those insights there, Zach, on thinking about not just how do we get out of those situations that we're not happy about that are, are burning us out and, and blaming it on all those things, just looking to move away from something, but really identifying those things that are gonna make us our best um, those things that are going to help yeah. take care of us, um, take care of ourselves and, and build other relationships and pieces in our life that are really important to us. So we can move towards and with those other right. things in that, in that whole life. And, and so I love that. Yeah. yeah. If I can say one more thing on that, sure. Jeff, <laughs> wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> there you are. Really profound, right? Right. Well, 
if you don't make these changes we're talking about in your life and you just es- try to escape burnout by changing companies, guess what? The version of you that's not prioritizing self-care is going to go right with you to the new company. And yeah. it's just a matter of time before you end up back in that same situation because you are at much at cause as the company was. Yeah. And so it may seem really dumb to say that, but you know, just remember, you got to focus first on what you can control within yourself, and then we can go create meaningful change inside right. your career. Yeah. The grass isn't always greener on the other side, and we need to be cultivating our own grass and our own yeah. old orchard yeah. and our own lives, right? That's what we're talking about here. So, uh, Zach, another thing I want to talk about here that the pandemic certainly has increased our awareness of, and that's uncertainty, right? So mm-hmm. there's so many things that uh, people can get worried about um, with company cutbacks or layoffs or you know, people transitioning from kind of getting comfortable to working from home and now maybe having to go back to the office. You and I probably talked to a lot of people in that situation or or other things about budget cuts or other other things. Uh, No matter what it is, you know, we're just not sure what it's going to look like on the other side here. That's what uncertainty is. So one of the challenges here with leaders at at every level um, is that uncertainty can also create fear um, because we're not sure how to deal with that. Um, we're not sure what's on the other side. So, but I know courage is a big thing for you that you talk about a lot. So talk to me about courage and why that's one of these most important qualities that engineers and engineering leaders can develop to push through that fear and uncertainty and these other things that we face. I could talk about courage all day. And, you know, Oeco is Oasis of Courage. That's the name of my company. And I absolutely agree with you that courage as a quality is not just nice to have as an engineering leader, it's mandatory if you want to move up and have an impact in your organization, in your teams, on your projects, and in your life outside the office. Why do I believe that? The shortest, simplest thing I could say for today is thinking about the comfort zone. All of us have it. In fact, you are automatically drawn to it by your subconscious mind. You know, your brain, it's a, it's a comfort seeking calorie conserving machine. It's just trying to pull you into the comfort zone because that old programming just wants to keep you safe. Don't go out into the street where there might be saber tooth tigers. You know, that part of our brain that just is seeking safety and security is an automatic mechanism and it has a place, but recognizing that that comfort zone, none of your dreams, your goals, your vision, all those things you want that you don't have today, none of those are found in your comfort zone. They are all just outside of it. And when you walk to the edge of your comfort zone, Jeff, fear is right there to meet you every single time. And if you think you can wait for fear to go away before you grow the size of your life, you're going to be waiting a long time. Fear is not going anywhere. The reality is you need the courage to exceed the fear so that you can face the fear and do it anyway. Courage must be greater than fear for action to happen. And action is the antidote, right? But to take that action, courage is that catalyst. Courage is that thing that's going to allow you to step right up to the edge of the comfort zone in your life. Face that giant of fear that's standing there and see it as just a small, tiny hurdle that you step right over. Courage is what it takes. And so, you know, why why nurture and learn about courage and actually discover how to strengthen courage It's not something you're born with or not. It's not some fairy tale superstar hero thing that I just, I wasn't doled out a good portion of it from the womb. It's not that. Courage is like a bicep. You just got to go grab the dumbbell and do the curls, strengthen the habit of courage. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, that's what people like Jeff and myself are here to help you with is to learn what does it really mean to strengthen courage and, you know, get a great coach. But but that's the reason, Jeff. 
you know, you're listening to this podcast engineer because you want something more from your life or, or you wouldn't invest time to something like this. You know, there's something you're seeking that's going to require you to get out of your comfort zone to go get. And fear is right there to greet you at the edge. You know, one of my coaches used to always point to the metaphor. You know, if you want to sail far from shore, you have to be able to weather a bigger storm, right? If you want to go further, you have to be prepared to face bigger giants. You know, if you want to, if you don't want to get to that point where you face fear, then you can't get very far from shore, right? You're going to be stuck right. in the dock. And so yeah. I know the engineer listening to this is the kind of leader who wants to go sail into uncharted waters. You know, that's why you're here. And just recognizing courage is what it takes. Yeah. Another quote from another one of my mentors, very similar to your, to your sailing analogy is that boats are safe in the Harbor but that's not what boats were made for to just Amen. sit in the Harbor, you know, like, so you can stay safe, but that's not what we were meant for to just sit around and, and, and do that. We've, we've got some things that um, we have opportunities to, to build and grow um, in our lives and, and grow and build the, the people around us. And that's really what, what leaders do. Right. Um, and sometimes we're not aware of those things. And, and like you said, um, and I'm sure you see people all the time who are like, I know there's this thing. I'm not sure how to do that. It scares me for one reason or another. They're facing that fear and having that support system of some sort, finding a coach, finding a mentor, whatever that is, having some accountability around that, um, going to help you have that courage to put in those reps and, yes. and get, get over the hump and then try it again and then try it again. Cause yes. those first times it's not always going to go great. Um, and so the, then round two can be even more terrifying to try again right. sometimes because uh, it didn't so go great, great the first time, but we can still have that support and learn from that experience and, and push forward. So I love what you're talking about here, Zach. Engineers are so uh, caught up in semantics of words and, and we love to be precise. So let me just say this as well. Fear has a thousand faces yes. and successful engineers don't use the word fear very often, but fear in your life at work it might be covered by stress. It might be discomfort. It might be frustration. It might even manifest as anger. Uh, there's a lot of ways that fear shows up. And, and if you're listening to this and you're like, ah, I'm not afraid of anything. I, listen, I'm not talking about like spiders. All right. There, there is, I promise you, an area in your career right now where fear is holding you back from the next level. It's 100% of the time. It's true for me in my life right now. It's true for Jeff. It's true for you. So you know, don't, don't get caught up in the idea of like, what is fear? It, it can show up in a lot of ways. Yeah, this has been great, Zach. I want to change gears just a little bit here. Um, we were talking about well, uh, before we got started, you've recently started your own podcast uh, called the Happy Engineer Podcast. So I'd love to learn more about what is the theme and the purpose of this podcast and where can people go listen to it if they're interested in learning more about some of these things? Yeah, Jeff, thank you so much for mentioning that. And, and I would love it if the engineers listening would go check out the Happy Engineer podcast. Thinking about this conversation we just had, you know, if we could just package that up as a, as a little nugget and say, hey, here's, here's a whole show where we want to help you unpack how do I build my career? while I balance my life in the pursuit of fulfillment and happiness and satisfaction across the whole picture, you know, and, and honestly, what I share in common with the engineering career coach podcast is a bias for action. You know, knowledge is not power when you don't use it. You know, knowledge alone is, is just knowledge. So it's all about having these really important conversations that are in many cases not being had but then distilling that down into some actionable insights that you can take into your career and life right now to help you get real results. And, and so that's what we're doing and bringing in some, some amazing leaders from different industries, from different sides of life, coaching, you know, career, all different domains, people with incredible stories and insights to share with the engineers out there. So please come check it out. You know, you can find it on any of the major podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, you know, iHeartRadio, any place you listen to podcasts, you'll find it there. Uh, or you can go to the, uh, the happy engineer podcast.com and you'll find it there too. Excellent. 
Well, Zach, this has been such a fun discussion and, and something that uh, I've, I've learned a lot from and, and been really encouraged by connecting more with you. At this point, we're going to transition into, into the Take Action Today segment, segment of the show, where we're going to get one more final takeaway from Zach that you can take action on today. Now it's time for our Take Action Today segment of the show. I've been talking with Zach White. And Zach, can you give our listeners one more insight into how can they really kind of think about taking the next level in their engineering careers by investing in themselves? Yes. Jeff, we talked about courageous action during the show today. And I can't think of a better place to start as an engineering leader than to take action by investing in yourself and investing in support for action. <laughs> you know, sometimes we only have an educational paradigm about investing in ourselves, go get another certification or an advanced degree. But like we talked about, knowledge alone is not power. And very rarely do I find an engineering leader where the degree or the next certification is truly the biggest barrier to why you're not getting results at work. So investing in yourself in a way that supports action in your life, getting a coach, starting into a mastermind, being part of a, a great community of engineering leaders, seeking that next level, going to you know, a conference where you're going to actually pick up actionable skills. The thing with engineers is we love certainty on outcomes, right? right. Y equals F of X, cause and effect. I want to guarantee that it's going to work. And that holds a lot of you back from taking this action. And that's where the courage comes in. You know, you're not guaranteed a result when you invest in yourself, but I'll tell you this, you are the most, you know, profitable and asymmetric bet you can make. You are the best wealth producing asset in your life. And, and the upside of those investments is unlimited. And the downside is some money and time. So absolutely encourage folks to invest in yourself and invest in action because that's where you're going to see real traction and rapid acceleration in your career. Yeah, love it, Zach. Um, been such a fun discussion today. We've talked about the, the podcast, but if people are interested in connecting with you, where else can they find you and other things you're up to? Absolutely. I hang out on LinkedIn a lot. So you'll find me there, Zach White on LinkedIn. If you're into social media, you'll find me at Oasis of Courage on all the other major platforms, Facebook, Instagram. So that's my handle at Oasis of Courage. And if you want to see what we're doing directly online, www.oasisofcourage.com. Please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, get in touch and we can schedule a call and make time if you're interested in learning more. So yeah, please, please connect. I love meeting new engineers who are seeking growth and acceleration in their career. It's, it's amazing. And like we said from the very beginning, Jeff, such a privilege to be a part of your journey as you grow. Yeah. Thanks so much, Zach. It's been a fun conversation and look forward to seeing your continued success and most importantly, the success of those that you get to work with. So thanks so much. Amen. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and questions. You can go to www.engineeringmanagementinstitute.org where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or other things mentioned during the episode today. And don't forget to check out our upcoming live webinar for this month at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. Additionally, for any engineers who are struggling with unemployment or uncertain about how to make an intentional career transition, this is a great time to be thinking about this. So I've created some free training resources with an opportunity to join a more intensive program called the Engineering Career Accelerator. You can find more information at engineeringcareeraccelerator.com. Until next time, I wish you all the best in your engineering endeavors.